everyone. Welcome to Rotary International District 9125 Trailblazer TV show. This show was initiated by the district to bring to you a recap of all activities and major topics at the Joint District Conference DISCON 2021. As you already know, this year DISCON is taking place here in Inlaw Choir State and the district has packaged loads and loads of activities for Rotarians to have a memorable DISCON time. Also on the show, we'll be having the privilege to bring to you distinguished Rotarians to come share their thoughts on some of these activities happening here at DISCON. So it promises to be exciting, entertaining as much as possible. So just sit relaxed and move along with us as we take you through DISCON 2021. My name is Hope Brown. So at this moment, I'd like to introduce our guest on the show. We have with us here Rotarian. Joshua Asan, who is our past district governor. So you're welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Also, we have with us here our district trainer, Rotarian Theodore Mayaki. I hope I'm not delivering very well. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> and lastly, we have Rotarian Ihoma Evelinda Wadiwa. You're welcome to the show. So without wasting much time, I would like us to go straight to speaking with PDG Asan. I want us to talk Rotary Foundation. What's your perspective so far on how the foundation has spread? Foundation is what we use in doing good in the communities all over the world. It's a foundation like uh, most of the foundation, but it's one of the best one in the world because we have the integrity, we have the transparency, and we account for money given by veterans, I guess. Uh, you put money there and you apply to it to get the needs of most of our community in which we do this assessment. Uh, what we do in the foundation and Russia generally, we, don't, we are not competing with anyone. We are just competing with ourselves to make sure that every day is better than last day, the last day you make. Uh, and so it is with the foundation. We have improved in raising funds in the district in the past three to four years to some of the best anyone. For example, in the area called Anwar Fund, uh, so last so three years, we have the opportunity we got 199, but as of today, we have 297. Wow. And we're hoping to get a 100% increase. Uh, the same thing, we have a slight increase in the giving for polio clothes. You know, polio clothes are the education of polio, and now we have added COVID-19. Okay. We had about 66,000 US dollars contributed there. Now we have reached 70 something US dollars. And by the way, they uh, we are the harbingers of this district has the greatest challenges when we have been uh, uh, this. And therefore, I'm, I'm, and when you give to the Retro Foundation, we recognize you. You, you. you give $100, you call your on every Rotarian every year, okay? you give $1,000, you call your poor Harris fellow, then you can be like the military, you add another $1,000 plus one plus two until you reach a major donor and major donor again half levels one two three four you go down for every level you you, 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 you get recognized last rotary year we had a total of 199 for harris fellows as i talked to you at 297 so we're doing great last rotary year we had 11 major donors wow. as of today we have 19 Okay, so, so let me come to the district trainer sir, Terry and Tildo Mayaki. I hope I got the Mayaki you know, correctly. Okay, so as a district trainer, I wanted to tell us how you've been able to carry out that role as a district trainer in District 905. Well, thank you very much for the very intrinsic question. It is not Every time you find people who are either Rotarians or bystanders inquire into the intricate role of training in the lives of Rotarians and their leaders. I refer to training as the silent achiever in Rotary. Um, when you look at the formation of our organization, you will find that Rotarians and their leadership are essentially people of precision, people of expertise, 
and there is uh, the, the expression of a lot of professionalism in the way we execute our assignments. When I assumed office as a district trainer, the first thing I did was to establish the relevant committees that were going to support my work as a district trainer within the year. And these committees gave me the requisite support at both the district level and also at the club levels. And this is because of the herculean task that lay lied ahead of me, part of which um, included first the orientation of new returns that were coming in to give them an idea of the environment they are walking into, to also prepare them to what not just Rotary expects of them, but including the society. We also had the responsibility of training incoming officers. Rotary will not let you touch an assignment of its uh, or without showing you the steps to take to the execution of that assignment. So you'll find that district officers have got scheduled timings on Rotary calendars to ensure that your training is done at a particular time. It's called the DTTS. There's also the training of the presidents elect, persons who are awaiting to become presidents. They will not be, in fact, it's a mandatory training and you will not be allowed to take over office in accordance with the principles of Rotary without first being trained. And we have incidences of a lot of presidents that didn't go through training that were not allowed to take office. So we do this on a recurrent basis. We also have training on membership. These trainings are scheduled on the Rotary calendar because at every point in time, things you do must meet the expectations of your community. And those things don't come by accident. They come by preparation. And training is that element of our work that covers that void. In terms of evaluation of um, principal officers that perform at the district, the reason is because you only see the impact of training you never see the input of training. That's what happens, but it is that very critical component of our work that always assures standards, assures output and impact. Yeah. yeah. So let me come to uh, Rotaria Hi Oma Nebinda. That's the fact that I got this time around. <laughs> uh, at the opening ceremony, we had um, the special recognition given to women in Rotary, the inauguration of women in Rotary. What's your thoughts about it, Nina Oma? I'm highly delighted when you talk about women in Rotary because I don't know what Rotary would have been without women. I'm okay. just sure because it's women that add the colors we are seeing in Rotary today. I mean, I'm a proud Rotarian because I'm a woman. Why? Because initially, when Rotary started, they did not allow women to join. Me. Because maybe we believe that because of the men ego, because of their status in the society, they believe that they are the kings, you know, that the women has to be the down the neck. But they find it very important, and even the women themselves, you even have to think about it. That I think they have the classification it takes for them to join that class of club, and they try to fight for their rights. There was an approval for women to join Rotary International. And the day the approval was gotten, it was a boom, it was a celebration all over the world. And that is how women joined and be able to bring out their ideas, to tap it on the men, to put the colors, to put the joy, the happiness. Everything we're seeing in Rotary today is just runs and goes around the women. We are the colors. So we find that women in Rotary has really had numbers. So that's why we're encouraging women that have good job, that have their ideas, that have good talent, to come and join Rotary so that we're able to help to solve the problems of the world. So we find that women in Rotary is a very big achievement Rotary International has done so far. When you talk about women in Rotary, like this week now one to find which happens to be our district. It was a great joy when it was inaugurated. It's not that women have not been joining Rotary clubs in our district. But this is just an official announcement 
to make the women to rob them for them to understand that their status their class in grocery level has been elevated we are part of decision makers so they have given us that power and we believe that with the inclusion of women in rotary rotary is going to go beyond what we are seeing today Nice work. Okay, so because I already mentioned one of the questions I was supposed to ask you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to ask you how, with this elevation mm. of women in your trade, how, how is it going to, um, like, um, the impact it's going to have on women in your trade? What are we expecting? Okay, the impact is going to great. You know, like this rotary team, rotary international always come out with different teams in the year. Every Rotary has its own team. We find out that the team for this year, Rotary opens opportunities. Yeah. Women in Rotary are going to open opportunities in terms of projects. Yeah. In terms because Rotary has its own areas of focus. With these seven areas of focus, we find out that women are being engaged and involved and participate in all these seven areas of focus. You see, in terms of education, basic education, we find out that women are ensuring that all the children will never live uneducated. So they try their own best in their own little way to ensure that a child acquire a little education as he or she can do. So when it comes to maternal and child health care, you know, previously the mortality rate has been so high, women have been dying through childbirth. But having that compassion, that passion to serve, that motherhood, they bring it to Rotary, whereby we find out that they are not careful. There are so many methods that are in place now so that women don't die through childbirth. Yeah. Prevention of diseases. We find out that polio, which happens to be a deadly disease that has been killing our children, our babies, we find out that it was a fight for vaccination immunization period, we find women out there going door to door to ensure that every child is being vaccinated. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities. We are going to light up the world with being in Rotary. We are going to give a lending hand. We are going to connect and build bridges and connect communities in terms of projects. So it is not only being in Rotary, oh, we are not celebrating one. We are there to serve service above self so we're going to bring our think tank the way we talk about women in which we are talking about women that have bring their ideas yeah. that have skills their talent their treasure and also their time to ensure that whatever principles that have been laid down by rotary is being implemented so let me come to the district right now so i want to ask you about your pro the projects what's that is like project what is to talk give especially on what the project is all about so the Water is Life project is um, a project that is very dear to my heart. First and foremost, the Rotary Foundation is predicated upon what we call seven areas of focus. And one of those seven areas of focus is water and sanitation. Upon the outbreak, of the corona pandemic, the district governor, our amiable district governor, Jubake Bawimboye, sat back and interrogated the situation. During the lockdown, it turned out that Rotarians had all stepped back into their various homes and comfort zones. And the district governor said, no, this is the right time for Rotarians to come out and show some love and propagate the philosophies that we profess that is selfless service the concept of the water is life came at a time when the federal government of nigeria and unicef were at the point of campaigning for improved hygiene and sanitation and the extermination of open defecation so the coincidence was quite delightful for the district governor when she decided at that point that the right thing for her to do was to initiate a global water project she termed Water is Life. Immediately we constituted a committee of experts and um, uh, people who had passion 
for water and the foundation. And we were also propelled to into this project when we found the um, multiplier effect of the Water is Life project in respect of the various other areas of focus. Because it was going to prevent disease, it was going to help mothers in the respective communities in mortality issues and children, it was going to um, solve the issues of conflict, it was going to help improve um, economic development. And therefore, we set out to begin to impact in our immediate community and found that after dealing with the pilot project, the potential for us to roll out the Water is Life project around the 24 states and the FCT, of course, that make up our uh, District 9125 became a party. First, we broke the ground in a community called Zietna in um, uh, Jikui community of the Federal Capital Territory. And that project went from the needs assessment to the choice of site, to the involvement of the community, to the acquisition of materials, to the assignment of the contractor to the site, to the create to the establishment of our Rotary Community Corps and the commission of the water project. I must tell you that it was profound and heartwarming the day we broke the first ground and commissioned the first borehole in that community in fulfillment of our promise to continue to replicate this water project around the district. It will interest you to note that that particular project was reticulated. It is not the kind of project you, uh, you know, establish a borehole, put up the overhead tank, and drop the taps. No, no, no. What we did was to build it and reticulated the, uh, the, the, the points of collection of water at respective um, streets in the community so that we would avoid the cramping up in the light of yeah, conforming, in conforming with the protocol on COVID to ensure that everybody had enough opportunity to collect water and also avoid the rush. And I'm delighted to inform you that this water has already broken. Wow. Yeah, because the district governor came in immediately and said, you know what, gentlemen, we will strike another relationship with the Ministry of the Federal Capital Territory which also came in and said, okay, we will help you break the ground and then you will do the remaining. We're actually in the process of completing that project in Ijavisa community in Bori Area Council of the FCT. And I can assure you that in the no distant future, we are going to deal with this. But I must connect our project with the foundation in a very uncommon way. We have also found a potential that it is very um, useful for us to continue to package this um, deployment of the water boreholes in the respective states of the district through packaging global grants and district grants. We've discussed that extensively at the committee level and the district governor is happy to continue to support this initiative knowing that the issue of sustainability was paramount in the consideration of the um, continued deployment of these water points around the 24 states that make up the FCT. And I'm delighted to inform you that we have already found a lot of the panacea we require to put these grants together and it's more assuring. Now, um, the district governor is working closely with the district governor-elect who has already set up a successive committee that will take over from us to continue this very beautiful innovation so that the promise that the district has made to the people in this district would be fulfilled and fulfilled with a bank. So I can assure you that this was an innovation and it was a reaction to this pandemic. As opposed to having Rotarians sit back or even run away as well and get locked down, the district governor felt that it was critical for Rotarians to step out because it is when everybody is down that Rotary goes up. So I thank you so very much for this opportunity to share with you the, the thinking of our district governor and how she's working 
through this committee to continue to provide support to our people in the areas of water um, and uh, hygiene. So let me just ask you briefly, just because I heard you say enough uh, that about how you felt with the this con the joint district conference so far. So I wanted to just say briefly how how they fared the um, planning committee so far. This is the last night, and tomorrow there's departure. So how can you tell about what's happened so far? Well, the quite frankly, we were not expecting less. Um, we were here during the investiture ceremony of the present district governor and um, build up to the district conference. The Amuda uh, Alabi um, committee had gone to work and on arrival we found a lot of commitment put into this. A lot of work had gone into this because um, district conferences are usually evaluated on the basis of your facilities, yes. on the basis of your logistics, on the basis of the content of your program. The facilitators, the resource persons, the feeding, the you know, it's been just phenomenal. Yeah. All of that had gone beyond our expectation because some of the finest resource persons around the country were here to talk to Rotarians. Food, I must tell you that it's mm -hmm. just been food, 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 food. And the hotels have also been very extraordinary. The committee ensured that all veterans got hotels and hotels were done very well. And also, I saw in the package how the planning committee also engaged Rotarians a week before through visitations, through tours around the ancient city of Ilorin and sightseeing locations. It was so extraordinary. And I want to sincerely use this opportunity to thank the district governor and the planning committee for doing an outstanding job. And it was quite amazing. I must assure you that it's constituted a new model and, uh, that I hope other subsequent discounts would emulate yeah. to continue to make um, um, Rotarians feel happier to attend discounts around uh, the district uh, next time. So, beautiful discount, I must tell you, is 100 of our, in fact, 110 <laughs> of 100. That's fantastic. Yes, they did too well. That's so nice. Mm. So, I want to appreciate it because. With what you just said, it's actually the truth. We've had opportunity to talk to Rotarians at different clubs, different states, and all they had to say was, I've had memorable time. This yeah. is the, one of the best. Yeah. That they had opportunity to have social activities, that they enjoyed every of those old school nights, jeans mm -hmm. party, mm -hmm. the reggae night, that it was all fun all through. So I'm really impressed that they had so much fun and they have so much to say about the discount 2021. I didn't have too much fun. I have to complain. <laughs> Uh, first of all, you said that we are going to depart tomorrow. I don't know whether you are planning to send us away. <laughs> now, I have a very serious problem. I came here on my own thinking I'm going to have a decent and nice district conference. And this morning, I just discovered that I put on an extra weight. Now, <laughs> exactly. That is too bad. much food. Because well, food we are all going home with an extra, extra weight. Yeah, okay. That's too much enjoyment. So, yes, yeah, so. you see, you see, it's a problem. Yeah. yeah. This morning, I just discovered that I put on an extra weight. <laughs> now, exactly. That is too bad. much food. Because well, well, food we are all going home with an extra weight. Yeah, that's too much enjoyment. Yes, so. You see, it's a problem. You have to realize it, you know. I didn't come here to go back and start getting the tailor to adjust my weight. Yes, sir. So you okay. want the fat. And uh, uh, they didn't allow us to, to have a takeaway of the pan wine. <laughs> the pan wine. And uh, I didn't see bush meat. I didn't have enough of pounded yam. Uh, I tested the degree. What is the other thing they put there? How can we do it? Okay. Uh, I'm all right. Okay, it's been such a wonderful time on the Trailblazer TV show. I want to say thank you to our guests for coming and sharing their thoughts. Thank you so much. And also to our viewers watching. Thank you. Join us again on another episode of the Trailblazer TV show. My name is Hope Brown. Bye for now. Yeah.